Okay, so we uh, will start now. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, now live stream is on. Okay, so today I will have uh, Jack Dolan uh, from University of Alberta uh, talking about the mirror symmetry and Calabial families over the twice punctured sphere. Jack? Okay, th thank you so much. Um, so, it's, it's wonderful to, to be here uh, remotely. Um, at some point, I'd love to, to visit in person. That would be, that would be really excellent. Um, I, I, yeah, sorry, it's a little early here in California. <laughs> but I, I stayed up late putting these slides together. So hopefully it, it'll, it'll tell a nice story. Um, I did it with the understanding that, that the audience would um, consist largely of graduate students. Um, I can't tell that from the names I see uh, on, on the, uh, uh, the Zoom call. Um, but I hope that there is a, an audience of grad students, either live or uh, who watch this later. So um, this is the first of two talks. Um, the title of this talk is uh, Mirror Symmetry and Calabia Families Over the Thrice Punctured Sphere. Okay. So um, a theme of this talk, which has not been emphasized too much, I think, in previous talks in the series, since the emphasis has been on, on things hypergeometric more than, um, say, string dualities, um, one theme is mirror symmetry, but it has been mentioned in earlier talks and introduced, so I can use it. Um, another feature of this talk is, well, the thing in blue, right? So what I mean by this is a, a, a family of Calabia manifolds, so that to each point P, or Calabia threefolds, um, projective algebraic Calabia threefolds, really, uh, to each point P in a base uh, for my family of algebraic varieties. In this case, I want my base to be the sphere, the, the, the Riemann uh, sphere, or CP1. Um, that generically, the fiber is a projective algebraic Calabian manifold, okay? And I'm only allowing it not to be uh, a smooth manifold uh, when P is zero, one, or infinity, so three points. So in that sense, we say we're looking at families of smooth Calabian uh, manifolds over the thrice punctured sphere. That's that's the, uh, uh, the setup there. Okay. So question, what do these have to do with one another, <laughs> okay? What on earth does mirror symmetry have to do with this very particular kind of question involving Calabi-Aus? Um, and the answer is really um, uh, coming from the seminal work of Green and Plesser um, um, and um, Candelis de Losa, Green and Parks. Um, so let's review that quickly. So if we start with the notion of uh, considering a quintic hypersurface in CP4, um, and you can think of the Fermat quintic hypersurface if you like. Um, a generic quintic will have H11 equal to one, okay? And that divisor just comes from taking the intersection with the hyperplane. So it's the hyperplane class uh, uh, in, in coming from CP4. Um, now, the expectation for mirror symmetry is that given um, a Calabiao or a family of such Calabiaos on one side, um, you'll, it, physics is asserting the existence of another family of Calabiaos. So in this case, it is, in, asserts that there exists another mirror Calabia threefold. And just as this Calabiao, the generic quintic has H11 equal one, the generic mirror quintic should have H21 equal one. And just as H11 is counting um, independent divisors, um, H21 is counting independent complex structure deformations. Um, so, our expectation is that we get a natural one parameter family of, of Calabi on, that, on three folds in this case on, on the mirror side. All right. Moreover, the quintic has H21, it's complex structure deformations, 101. So the actual Hodge diamond of the quintic will look something like this. It looks like this. Okay. Um, you have um, these ones and all the zeros on the outside by general considerations. You have this one and consequently this one from what I just said about the H11 equal one, and you have this being 101 and consequently this being 101 um, by what I said about H21 being 101. So what is the mirror? Well, the mirror in the sense of flipped around this, if you like, uh, the quintic mirror has this structure here. Okay, so the Hodge diamond now has um, one complex structure deformation um, and 101 uh, independent classes uh, of the H11 part. All right. But how do you construct this thing? So this goes back to the work of Green and Plesser. 
And Green and Pleasure did take as their starting point the Fermat Quintic. Um, but they viewed the Fermat Quintic and how they got to the Fermat Quintic was by looking at what are called Gepner models in conformal field theory. Um, and symmetries of Gepner models in conformal field theory are what led them to the construction. Um, so in particular, if you take the, the Fermat Quintic uh, threefold and you quotient by the action of Z mod five Z cubed. Now this is gonna be acting by fifth roots of unity, but you have a trivial diagonal action um, and you have an overall scaling that doesn't matter because this is a projective algebraic hypersurface. So it's really a Z mod five Z cubed, not to the fifth. Um, you then have to resolve the singularities. That's actually not canonical in the sense that there's choices that you have to make to resolve the singularities. I get various birational uh, models uh, of, of the, 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 the smooth Calabria threefold that results. But in any case, you're, you say, well, this is the construction um, of, of, of the mirror, okay? And if you do this and make the choices along the way, that gives one Calabria threefold with the correct Hodge numbers. Okay, but the fact that it has the correct Hodge numbers tells you that it sits in a family, a one parameter family, um, because you compute that H21 is one um, and unobstructedness of complex structure deformations for Calabias tells you this will, this will live in a, in a complex uh, one dimensional family. Um, so the others, meaning the other um, Calabias in the mirror family arise by doing the same construction in a family or do it at one point and use general deformation theory arguments, okay? The way Green and Plesser did is they just did the whole thing in a family. So they did the unusual uh, step, unusual from the standpoint of general nonsense involving generic quintics, of taking a non-generic pencil of, of, of quintics um, built out of basically a Fermat piece and then a maximal degeneracy piece. Um, I threw in a five here to normalize things a bit. I probably could have taken some fifth powers of the mu and nu if you really care. But the point is this pencil of quintics um, in CP4, you can do the same action of Z mod 5 Z cubed on all of them um, and you can resolve all of them. Okay. Now, you are not going to get that every value of um, mu colon nu is going to result in a smooth Columbia, but there will be finitely many that are not. Okay. And, and those are the ones that um, ultimately with correct normalizations will get punctured in our family. Okay. So they constructed in this way, a family of smooth projective Calabia threefolds over the thrice punctured sphere, P1 minus zero, one infinity. Sorry, I have an alarm to turn off on this. Okay. Um, now that was Green and Plesser, the sort of original mirror construction. Um, what came shortly thereafter and quite importantly thereafter was Candelis de Osa Green and Parks. I won't talk about all that's in that paper. There's you know, I think Victor Batyuk once told me that every time you go back to the paper, you learn something new. It's just wonderful, wonderful paper. Um, but I wanna focus just on the fact that, that they addressed um, another feature of this family of mirror Columbia threefolds that was not present in the original work of Green and Plesser. They studied integration, integrals of the holomorphic three form, uh, which is well-defined up to complex non-zero scaling over integral three cycles, which they constructed explicitly uh, on the Calabia threefolds in the family. Okay, so now they're doing integration. Now they're actually getting at periods uh, on, on, the, um, on the Calabia threefold. Um, and the periods they showed, um, and, and this was actually known by work with Dwork and, and building on uh, work, work with Dwork earlier, um, the periods satisfy a generalized hypergeometric ODE. This is our first connection to the hypergeometric theme here. Um, annihilating very specifically, um, as I said, with the correct normalization on the base parameter uh, Z, uh, 4F3, 1 5th, 2 5th, 3 5th, 4 5th, 1 1 1. Okay. Um, and the Z here then becomes the base of the family. And then the regular singular points, three of them, there's only three, of the hypergeometric ODE uh, correspond to the positions. Um, uh, where uh, something funky happens in monodromy. And, and in terms of the singular fibers, that's where your singular, singular fibers will, and the family will sit. Um, okay, great. So um, as I said, it has three regular singular points, which can be normalized to zero, one, and infinity. Um, and they come in three flavors. So I'm gonna normalize things in such a way where Z equals zero is a maximal unipotent monodromy point. So unipotent of maximal rank. Um, 
is equal one is the conifold monodromy. So that's making a comment about the nature of the singularities on the Calabria threefold, conifold or ordinary double point singularities. But in terms of the actual monodromy, that's saying it's unipotent of rank one. Um, and then finally, quasi-unipotent monodromy at infinity. Well, it's a general fact um, that any algebraic uh, family, a family of algebraic varieties um, will have quasi-unipotent monodromy. Um, and um, we know also here with the presentation of the fundamental group of the thrice punctured sphere that the inverse of the product of the monodromies around these two is going to be the monodromy around this. So we think of this as just being, you know, a consequence of having this monodromy and this monodromy subject to the condition that it must be part of quasi unipotent. Okay, so that's something that pops out naturally. Um, now, Kontsevich in his homological mirror symmetry um, added some more ideas to the mix. So he studied automorphisms of DB co. So this is the bounded derived category of coherent sheaves uh, on a, a quintic. Um, and he looked explicitly at, at three classes of such automorphisms. Um, and he showed just by computation that they corresponded to integral monodromies on the mirror side. So integral monodromies about zero, one, and infinity respectively uh, in the mirror quintic family. Okay. Um, and I remember seeing a, a talk by, by Konsevich many years later, um, sort of a retrospective talk he gave at CMSA, where he said that this was actually a very bold conjecture on his part in the sense that the only examples he had that where he proved this yet were elliptic curves. <laughs> so he hadn't actually done it for, for the, uh, when he first gave the, the talk presenting this and, and the, the, um, the, anyway, the, the ICM lecture. Um, okay, but what Kontsevich's point is, is that this correspondence is very, is very general and it should apply to any Calabia threefold um, with H11 one one equal one. There really is no reason why it has to be specific to the quintic. Um, and physicists had already done lots of examples after they worked out the quintic, and, and um, you know it was clear that that Calabria threefolds uh, with H one equal one, um, a similar story could be done for. Um, but the simplest mirrors of a Calabria threefold with H one one equal one, well, they're going to be families with H two one equal one. That's just Hodge number mirror symmetry. But the simplest families will be fibered over mirror families will be fibered over the thrice punctured sphere. Okay. And this is for reasons of otherwise triviality for, for, for the monodromies. If it's two punctures, then the monodromy about one of the points is just the inverse of the monodromy about the other, um, uh, et cetera. Okay. So you easily dispense with the, um, with the one and two punctured case, zero one and two punctured case. All right. Um, moreover, from Kansevich's analysis, if you want to directly generalize the quintic, the natural thing to do is to insist that one of the points, let's say z equals zero, is normalized to be the maximum unipotent monodromy point. Another one of the points is the conifold monodromy point, so unipotent, maximal, unipotent of rank one. And then the third point is what it is, but it had better be quasi unipotent. Okay, so that's the, that's the, the simple prediction um, uh, coming from Kansai, which is homological mirror symmetry. Now, a lesson from Candelis, especially Candelis, Stilos, Green and Parks, um, is that mirror symmetry often takes a hard problem and turns it into an easy problem. Of course, you can also take an easy problem and turn it into a hard problem, <laughs> if you look at it that way. Um, and so here in this setting, as a geometer, the hard problem, um, and this is something that motivated my work, uh, my work with Morgan, um, was, well, what about mirroring the hard problem of finding all Calabia threefolds with H11 equal one? Okay. So we knew lots of ways of constructing Calabia threefolds with H11 equal one. There's some beautiful work of, of Borsha, uh, uh, you know, running through every construction he could think of uh, um, to, to come up with, with families with H11 equal one. Um, and as the years have progressed, there's been more and more interesting kind of, kind of um, intricate algebra geometric constructions uh, of, of Calabia threefolds with H11 equal one. But one thing that they lack is any sort of regularity, right? You know, the constructions are, um, as I said, intricate and clever, um, but um, you, you don't have a sense that you're getting everything 
Um, there's not just a, a uniform approach to the question. So the question was, well, if we mirror that, maybe there's a uniform approach to this. Okay, so the mirror problem became, find all Calabia threefolds with h to one equal one. Okay, well, this opens up a big can of worms because all we know from h to one equal one is that we're going to have a family over some kind of Riemann surface with punctures. Um, and um, it still is essentially an open question um, whether that Riemann surface can have a genus bigger than zero. Um, there's all sorts of issues that might arise if you're trying to address the problem at this level of generality. On the other hand, you can naturally constrain the problem so the simplest non-trivial case or set of cases to consider would be to insist that H to one equal one for the mirror, but also have the base be the thrice punctured sphere. Okay. Now notice at this point, we're not imposing any hypergeometric restriction. This is, this is just, this is all we're asking for. All right. Now to be compatible with Konsevich's prediction, um, specifically for the Quintic and some examples that have been looked at in the physics literature, we should be looking for um, an integral variation of Hodge structure, weight three, Hodge type one, 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 over P1 minus three points. <clears throat> and again, with let's say a maximal unipotent monodromy, so unipotent of maximal rank over zero, conifold mono monodromy, so unipotent of rank one over one, and quasi unipotent monodromy, whatever it is, but it better be quasi unipotent of infinity. Okay. Um, so what we asked ourselves was, to begin with, did we impose enough conditions to make this a reasonable question? In other words, is this even a finite problem? Okay. Um, general nonsense conjectures in, in involving Calabi-Aus suggest yes, it should be a finite problem. Um, but you know, those are just intuitions for what should be true rather than, um, uh, than any kind of um, a powerful theorem that's telling us. So we wanted to be confident before we started looking for these that there was actually a finite list. Um, and that's where the work of Deline comes in. So Deline did two things for us. Um, first of all, he established finiteness of the integral variation of Hodge structure. So for any uh, collections of points on a Riemann surface, you, you run the variation of Hodge structure classification problem uh, in, in principle. And um, he gives an argument for finiteness of integral VHS. I should note that he has to fix the positions of the punctures. So the, the points where there's non-trivial monodromy have to be fixed. You can't move them. Um, so for instance, if you had four points on CP1, his argument does not tell you that there will only be finitely many cross ratios to the four points um, that will correspond to, to the, the base of a, of a ZVHS of a given type. But for three, we're in great shape. Okay. Um, it, it's fundamentally rigid, right? You can, you can turn any three points into zero or an infinity. Um, moreover, um, we show with a little bit of Hodge theory that the classification of integral VHS in this case is completely equivalent with the classification of integral symplectic monodromy representations. So you take the fundamental group of the price punctured sphere with a base point and you consider uh, representations into SP4Z. Okay. Now, of course, this is up to the natural notions of equivalence for the such representations. You, know, you have global conjugacy and things like that to worry about. Um, but it certainly turns a problem that's a priori more difficult into a problem that is, is um, more concrete and tractable. Okay, so um, what did we do? Well, um, we used then some representation theory methods and Hodge theory to classify all the weight three Hodge type one, 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 one integral VHS over the thrice punctured sphere, subject to the condition that we had maximum component monodromy at z equals zero, conifold meaning monodromy uh, rank one, uh, at, at z equal one, and then whatever the condition was at infinity, but imposing quasi potency because we need that to come from geometry. And this led to 112 possible integral VHS up to conjugation equivalents. Okay, um, it's kind of a big number, a lot more numbers there, a lot bigger number there than the um, uh, examples that we're familiar with, um, uh, certainly uh, from geometry. But only 23 three of these are mirror compatible in a strong sense that we describe in our paper. Um, we um, track through sort of topologically source um, uh, in, in integral K theory, um, uh, certain, uh, certain um, aspects of the prediction from Konsevich. Um, that's still a big number, <laughs> okay? And if you look at the underlying real variations of an structure though, 
you get just 14. Okay, 14 real VHLs. So um, what do these look like? Well, here's a table I took from our paper and um, I should probably have one extra starred row here. Um, but anyway, so here we can see the A's corresponding to the four F3, A1, A2, A3, A4, semicolon, one, 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 semicolon, or bar Z, okay? So these 14 real VHS are, surprise, surprise, and not a surprise because you had a lot of talks in this series, uh, um, uh, are actually four F3s with these, these specific A values and the B1, B2, B3 are all one, okay? The M and A, a here are a pair of integral invariants that John and I cooked up that are naturally associated to, to the monodromy at zero and one. Um, the number of LZ is the number of integral um, variation to Hodge structures that show up in um, each real equivalence class. So you can see um, there's a unique one in the case of, of 112, 512, 712s, 11 12s. Um, you go down to the one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, which is the one we mentioned earlier. And there's actually two possible cases, two integral VHSs there, okay? Um, you then impose this mirror compatible condition, and that's what cuts you down to this big list where you have 50 there uh, to having only four. Um, and there's a new invariant uh, T that we introduced um, uh, in, 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 to, to refine the, 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 uh, the, the classification of the actual integral VHS and we list the possible T values corresponding to each of the mirror compatible cases, okay? So we do a lot of analysis in that paper, um, uh, state improve various things and, and conjecture others. Um, but what I wanna talk about now is just the question that remained of the geometric realization of each integral VHS. Now at the time, John and I were worried about various foundational questions about VHS of, oh, well, you know, you want to have a polarization, you have a positivity condition. We wanted to get that all for free by coming from geometry. That's, that's one, one concern. In the end, you can argue those things directly uh, from the, the, how, how simple the, the, the uh, underlying uh, real VHS uh, uh, is as a hypergeometric type, but it's still, because of the motivation originally for mirror symmetry, places a premium on, hey, you know, can we geometrically realize these and how do we geometrically realize them? Okay, you want to geometrically realize them in a strong sense. So there's, there's, there's various weak senses of, of a variation of hot structure coming from geometry. Um, John and I wanted it to be very strong. We wanted it to be an actual family of projective algebraic, smooth, generically, Calabia threefolds with H21 equal one that gave rise to this variation. Okay, that's literally what we wanted. Um, and for 13 of the 14 real VHS, this was easy because there were existing toric hypersurface or complete intersection constructions. And you could use the, the um, Batyarev or the Batyarev Borisov in the complete intersection case mirror symmetry construction. And using this construction, you were able to get the family, okay? So I go back here and the ones with stars, and as I said, I think one of the others is starred, um, correspond to not actually weighted projected complete intersections. You have to add some extra points and blow out the polytope a little bit. Um, but then you're able to, to apply the, the, the gordon c toric mirror construction uh, of Batsarov and Borisov, and you're able to get the answer. It's, it's, it's beautiful. So in this case, uh, here we go, it's P45. So this is quintic hypersurfaces O. And of course we mean by that, that the mirror of a generic quintic hypersurface is gonna give you a family of Calabia threefolds with this variation, okay? Um, and that's what we mean for all these. This would be the mirror of a two, four complete intersection in P5. It's gonna give you this one, et cetera. Okay, um, great, 13 to the 14, it worked. Okay, the 14th case, which for, to emphasize it, we put as the first case in our table was much more subtle, okay? So this is the 1 12th, 5 12th, 7 12th, 11 12th example. Um, and it's not hard to see and we mentioned it in our paper, um, that there is a three parameter family of H21 equal three Calabia threefolds that show up as the mirror of a 212 complete intersection in weighted projective 112812, okay? There's also a, a, a related hypersurface model, birational hypersurface model for the same thing in a weighted projective uh, four space. Um, but the problem is, well, I'll, before I get to the problem, 
The good news is, and, 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 and why would we look at a three parameter family? Well, it's because you then look at the GKZ hypergeometric period functions, okay, the, the series that you get in multivariables, um, three independent variables, um, and restrict them to give this hypergeometric ODE variation along a particular one parameter subfamily. And you can eyeball this, we did this way back when. Okay, you look at the series and you say, aha, if I specialize this parameter, this parameter, this parameter, I'm gonna get, it's not quite a diagonal, but anyway, it's something like that. And I'm going to get that the series collapses to the series for the 4F3, okay, that's great. Um, and if that's all you wanted, you'd be happy. Okay, but, but John and I wanted more. The problem is everywhere along this one parameter subfamily, the mirror complete intersection Calabi-Yau's, now a one parameter family, mirror complete intersection Calabi-Yau's becomes singular, okay? You're just in the singular locus for this H21 equal three family, okay? Degeneration has happened, there's no, no avoiding it. Um, to this day, as far as I know, there is no known smooth family of projective algebraic Calabia threefolds that realize this integral variation of Hochstra, this 14th case. CPHS. So the strongest form of what John and I are asking for is still not available. Still not, it's not there. Okay. Um, but when you can't find the ideal <laughs> that you really didn't have a justification for asking for in the first place, it was just motivated by other examples, you, you weaken that a little bit. And we're not willing to weaken it so far as to not be connected to the actual geometry of Calabia threefolds. Um, that's a personal bias, but also for someone con concerned with um, applications in, in, in string theory and, and mirror symmetry. Um, so we still want it to be connected to the calabi probably these calabi but we want a Hodge theoretic origin from geometry for the variation. Okay, and we don't have that here yet on this page. Okay, so this is where the follow-up work um, in Andre Novoselsev's thesis, and then uh, work with Klinger, um, my former student, Jacob Lewis, um, and uh, former postdoc Alan Thompson came in. Um, and what we did over many years is we analyzed this three parameter family very carefully. And what happens when you restrict to certain two parameter subfamilies and ultimately to the intersection of the two two parameter subfamilies, which is this one parameter family. And even after crepent partial desingularization, we showed that the generic Calabia threefold in the family will still have a pair of Q factorial nodal singularities. Okay, now a Q factorial nodal singularity has the property that there is no small projective resolution. None, okay, it just, it, 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 it cannot be done. Uh, you try to do it, you leave the algebraic category, which might be fine depending on who you are um, and, and depending on what applications you have in mind. But for our purposes, we didn't wanna do that. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, we're not interested in the world of non kähler Calabiales, for example. Um, so we're not even birational to a smooth Calabial realizing this variation in the Hodge structure directly. Now, this doesn't mean that there can't be somebody else's construction of a family of smooth Calabiales realizing it, but that won't be birational to this one. That's, that's the thing to think about. Okay. Um, now, what we showed is that you can, this is the good news, geometrically realize this integral VHS, but you do it by looking at the mixed Hodge structure of the family of singular Calabi house. And so it's the third weight graded piece of the mixed Hodge structure on H3 that admits a pure um, um, integral variation of Hodge structure of weight three, Hodge type one, 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 that realizes the 14th case integral variation. Okay, so you, you actually get what you're after almost in the perfect form that you want, but at the cost of actually going into the, the discriminant locus in a, a multi-parameter family and working with mixed hot structures. Okay. Um, as a side effect and an indication of just how non-trivial this construction is, it provided a counterexample to a conjecture of Morrison on mirrors of degenerations. Okay, because, um, well, we, actually showed that this came from a smoothing and the prediction was that smoothings would have to correspond to uh, smooth calabials on the other side. Anyway, that's, that's not here nor there, but, but it is an indication, if you like, um, for the, the um, you know, cognoscenti when it comes to Calabio examples, that this is a really highly non-trivial calculation and, and um, it's shedding light, uh, importantly, 
on uh, conjecture relating mirror symmetry to degenerations. Um, a considerably more successful conjecture involving mirror symmetry and degenerations is something I'll talk about on Thursday. Um, and it's not unrelated to this work. Okay, so question, and this is again motivated by my training as a geometer, what geometrically do all of the mirror Calabia threefolds have in common? That's the question. Okay, so let's just parse this a little bit. Um, we have a description of them all, but what was in that column? I don't want to flip back because I didn't flip forward, but what was in that column? It was, you know, P4 bracket five or P5 bracket two comma four. That wasn't a description of the geometry of the mirror family. That was a description of the geometry of the family, which when you apply mirror symmetry, <laughs> shows up with, as giving this variation, okay? So to say you're talking about the quintic mirror family intrinsically is what we're talking about, or the, the you know, geometric family of smooth Calabia threefolds realizing such a hypergeometric variation intrinsically, not as the mirror of something else, okay? So an answer is they are mirrors of dot, 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 okay? Well, that's not really very satisfying from the standpoint of, of um, what you might call the B model, right? It's not very really satisfying uh, from the standpoint of, of uh, um, well, whichever model you want in physics. But the point is, it's not very satisfying from the standpoint of integral variation of Hodge structure being realized geometrically, okay? Um, you want a, a, a uniform geometric construction if at all possible, okay? So a better answer that uh, we came up with um, comes from observing the internal structure of these Calabia threefolds. Okay, now what do I mean by internal structure of a Calabia threefold? Um, well, in work with Harder Nobles at Seven Thompson, uh, we showed that all of these Calabia threefolds we're talking about are fibered by high Picard rank, 18 or 19 K3 surfaces. Okay, so the internal structure I'm talking about is the Calabia admits a fibration over CP1 by K3s. Internal. And I'm not talking, I mean, I have a, I have a multi, I have a family, one parameter family, if it's H21 equal one, or a multi parameter family of H21 greater than one of Calabia threefolds. But I'm saying each Calabia threefold in the family is itself fibered over CP1 by K3s. Okay. Um, okay, great. So that's what we mean by internal structure. Um, can we get a uniform construction? I mean, this is great. We, this came from, you know, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this, well, I'll say more about this in the next page. Um, but still it's, you know, rank 18 or 19, there's a collection of, of lattice polarized K3s you have to look at. It still seems a little hit or miss. It doesn't seem like a nice, clean, uniform kind of, kind of construction. So we work with Bamendier, kind of uh, uh, um, effort uh, uh, in parallel focused on, on Picard fixed differential equations. Uh, we show that in fact, all of these are fibered possibly in multiple ways by what are called MN polarized K3 surfaces. So the MN polarized K3 surfaces, I'll write down the, the, the lattice on another page, but they're mirrors, if you wanna think in terms of mirror symmetry, to just two N polarized K3 surfaces. So that in some sense, they're the simplest mirror families of K3s, okay? Um, and for small N, they themselves give um, 3F2 hypergeometric variations. So in the work with Harder, Nobles, and Seven Thompson, um, what was our method? Our method at first was just a brute force search. It was a search for torically induced vibrations and Columbia threefold hypersurfaces or completed sections. And this involved working with polytopes in SAGE, um, something that Andre Nelson Sev is an expert with. Um, and we were able to recognize the fibers as K3 surface hypersurfaces or completed sections and other toric varieties. Okay. Um, and then connect that to the last polarization and then give a nice intrinsic characterization. So this motivated um, a program, which was entirely successful, of generalizing um, uh, Kodaira's classification for elliptic surfaces to um, MM polarized K3 surface fiber uh, Calabia threefolds. Um, and um, that's something that I think uh, Andrew hinted at um, and discussed in detail in the M2 case in, in his lecture. Um, and I'll come back to on, on Thursday and, and say more about um, specifically in a mirror symmetric context. Um, okay. Um, but in terms of the, the work with Melmendier, um, well, we're working with something a little different. I mean, now we, we wanna work very specifically with this MN case. Um, 
And the method was to embrace this notion of internal structure, okay? So instead of just thinking of, oh, um, I want a K3 vibration on a Calabia threefold, I'd say, well, wait a minute, maybe we want an elliptic vibration on that K3. And maybe you want that elliptic curve to be presented as a double cover of P1, you know? So uh, in other words, fibered by Columbia zero folds, which is a pair of points, generically, right? So the idea was to iteratively construct families of Columbia N folds from families of Columbia N minus one folds. And in the process, get explicit Weierstrass elliptic fiber models for these iterated, uh, um, iteratively constructed Columbia Ls. Um, and as well, get the Picard-Fuchs differential equation for the family at every step. Okay, so that was the idea. That's what we, that's what we did. So our starting point were Calabia zerofolds. And as I, I mentioned, a Calabia zerofold is a pair of points or a double point, which would be a singular Calabia zerofold. Um, we can think of that as the solution, plus or minus y, to y squared equals one minus t, where t is our parameter that we run. Um, and that's how we do it in, in the paper well, with Mementia. Um, and the period is then your <laughs> hypergeometric one F zero, uh, one half bar T. So it's a, you know, it's a rational function. It's very, very, very simple uh, uh, period, but it is hypergeometric of M plus one F N type, okay? Um, and this is the starting point. This literally is pair of points family um, with this period. This is the starting point of, of, of the entire analysis. So we introduce, or rather abstract the notion I introduced years earlier of a generalized functional variant. We abstract it in terms of, of the necessary data for twisting up um, uh, families of Calabiao n folds to families of Calabiao n plus one folds. Um, you could think of it as a combination of, of um, uh, base change and quadratic twist or a generalization of quadratic twist in the sense of elliptic surfaces. And for these parameters, i, j, alpha, with i running from one to two and j running from one to twice alpha and alpha either one half or one, we construct twisted families in this way of genus one curves. And this is you know, visibly gonna be a genus one curve. Um, you can see the cij is a, a, a constant actually associated with i and j, I forget what it is. It's something like i to the i times j to the j over i plus j to the i plus j. It's a, it's a standard hypergeometric constant that, that shows up in the, in the literature. Um, and um, this, uh, these tilde variables are just because we are not technically the same variables as the ones we started with there. This y is not the same as this y, so it's y tilde. Um, and you introduce a new variable, x tilde, which is um, uh, then uh, kind of a promotion of the previous t variable um, and, and a new variable t tilde uh, for the deformation parameter for the family. So you get these twisted families of genus one curves, okay? Um, and specifically, um, if you impose uh, a restriction on, on these ij alphas, um, you get some very familiar elliptic modular surfaces. Okay, so you get rational elliptic modular surfaces with section for gamma naught of n for n one, two, three, and four. Okay, and you just read this off the construction. Um, you actually can get a fifth one, but then it's isogenous to one of these, so it's fine. Um, Okay, great. So we've gone from um, a pair of points, or rather a family of pairs of points, right, uh, to a family of elliptic curves in this, in this way. Um, and now why stop there? So at the next step, we twist up again, okay? So now the rational surfaces we start with are here. We twist up again, we get families of K3 surfaces coming from these extremal rational elliptic surfaces. Um, and uh, the Mordel Ve, uh, Torsier Mordel Ve looks very familiar, and there's all sorts of beautiful structure here. And what is the polarizing lattice of the generic K3 in the family? Well, it's M1 if you come from X211, it's M2 if you come from X321, M3 from X431, M4 from X141. Okay, so we get Weierstrass elliptic fiber because they were the previous step. Lattice polarized K3 surfaces whose generic Picard lattice is of this MN type for n equal one, two, three, four. Okay. And not accidentally, the Picard Fuchs differential equation for MN type um, 
um, K3s, Grenical 1, 2, 3, 4, um, is going to actually be of hypergeometry type itself. It's a 3 of 2 equation. Okay. So, um, and as I said, again, the family of K3 surfaces is fibered once again over the thrice function. Well, obviously you don't stop there, <laughs> okay? So you do it once more um, and you get all 60 symplectically rigid integral variations of odd structure classified by um, Bogner and Reiter. So these generalize the hypergeometric case. The hypergeometric case is 14, um, but in the hypergeometric case, um, you're always going to have a conifold behavior, a unipotent rank one. Um, if you drop that condition and you consider just the symplectically rigid ones that always have a maximal unipotent, but um, other than that, um, just the symplectic rigidity condition, um, you get 60. Um, and there was not a geometric construction known for, for uh, most of these. Um, they did show up, of course, in the list of Calabial type equations, meaning differential equations, um, in uh, uh, the online database. Um, and, and they had been classified by Bogner and Ryder, uh, but there was no geometric construction. So um, what we got then for all of these 60 and beyond, of course, um, was explicit wire stress elliptic MN polarized K3 surface fiber Calabia threefold families realizing um, the, the, the variations of hot structure. Um, uh, and again, it's an iterative construction. So you have complete control over not just the periods of the Calabia threefolds, but the periods of the K3 fibers. And for that matter, the periods of the elliptic curve fibers of those. Once again, we're dealing with families over the thrice punctured sphere. So um, this got us to the same place. Um, now, what's really fun is that there's actually no need to stop there, okay? Um, in fact, this procedure continues and you can get infinite Calabial towers over the thrice punctured sphere, okay? And since I have a little bit of time left, let me just mention, okay, the, um, the most famous source of Calabial manifolds. Um, oh, sorry, mirror manifolds um, in all dimensions is, of course, the degree n plus one hypersurfaces. In uh, Pn. Okay, so degree three in P2, degree four, the, the cortic surfaces in, in P3, and of course, as I said, the quintic in, in uh, P4, and it just keeps going. So this is the source. Now you take the mirror, okay, and what our construction shows, and then we, I originally derived it uh, with Milosevsev using toric methods, but, but then what it, what it shows uh, in, in, in sort of general method is that um, the the mirror to, um, let me give a name for this, degree n plus one over certain and then we'll call this um, x um, n plus one because of degree or n minus one because of dimension. Let's call it x n minus one because of dimension. So the mirror to x n minus one is fibered by X n minus two, and that's for all n, okay? So what you have is that the quintic mirror is fibered by quartic mirror K3s, and the quartic mirror K3s are fibered by cubic mirror elliptic curves, and the cubic mirror elliptic curves are fibered by quadric mirror pairs of points. Anyway, but the point is you keep going up this tower, okay? So you actually get an infinite tower of iterated vibrations, and this is the geometry that's behind um, that increasing tower of the, of the, the uh, n plus one FNs. Um, um, comment, and this is something I discovered while teaching a course on mirror symmetry and workshopping the Candela Stilosa Green and Parks paper. So comment, the actual proof of um, construction of uh, periods 
over integral cycles in Candelas, Dela Osa, Green, and Parks um, has a hidden, a hidden step. So a hidden realization, because they didn't actually describe it this way, a hidden realization of what I'll call um, quartic mirror vibration on the quintic mirror. Okay. Um, so what happened is they're in the process of constructing their basis of four integral cycles um, and the periods over them. They, in effect, without realizing it, um, take a, a slice to reduce the dimension that takes them uh, to a period they can compute, which involves a 3F4 for the quartic mirror. I'm sorry, a 3F2 for the quartic mirror. Okay, so it's the one fourth, one half, uh, three fourths. Um, they then do a, a series of calculations and at the bottom indicate there's this miraculous reorganization of the terms to yield the four F3, one fifths, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths calculation that we're going for. Okay. Um, and that is nothing but a hint of the general theory I developed in my MDA uh, for going up these towers. Um, so in some sense, you could say the history of the subject could have been very different if more attention had been paid to that particular method of construction in their paper and people realized, oh, wait a minute, we can build Calabia threefolds out of internal K3 fibrations effectively. Um, and the, the uniform explanation of the 14 cases would have been more apparent. Um, anyway, that's um, uh, nothing but a historical aside and a fun little point. And uh, when we write up the proceedings note, I'll be sure to explain it in detail. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All very nice talk. Any questions? Well, I have a question. Oh yes, Noriko. Uh, because this, um, this in, sort of inductive structures for 14 uh, cases, Perhaps come from the inductive structures from hypergeometric series, F21, F32, F43. Yeah, yeah, it's it's compatible with that. So so at every step, you get a family of Calabia threefold, the Calabia manifolds with an M plus one Fn um, um, underlying Picard Fuchs. So 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 yeah, and and what's interesting about it is there's also a direct realization of passing from period to period to period using Hadamard product. Um, so that would be a whole nother talk to go into the the details of, of the construction and, and its implications for Picard-Fuchs equations and the periods. But you know we have to build the twisted cycles at every step as well, right? Because you have to integrate over a cycle that you're yes, building. Yes, yes. So, so that's the ge geometric side of the picture, but then sort of analytic side is the Picard Hooks inductive structures, uh, looks like uh, to me. Well, it's a sequence, right? But but um, I, it would I, I, I'd be wary to, to say that, how do I say it? Um, it's not hard to see that the families, ex that, that there, are, there exist families of Calabia threefolds of each dimension with the Picard-Fuchs equation that's of hypergeometric type. That's not hard. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's hard is to show how they're related from dimension N to dimension N plus one. Right, right. And that's the internal vibration structure. And then you have to meticulously construct the periods of the family of higher dimensional Calabiaos Using the periods of the lower dimensional Calabias. That's that's so what's it, tricky. Yeah. yeah, so it's not like a simple symmetric square or anything like that. Okay. No, but of course all the MNs will have the symmetric square structure. Um, right. But that's the wrong. That's actually the the wrong thing. It's like the symmetric square root does not give you a family of elliptic curves, right? Right. It, right. it, it gives you something. Yeah, in the in, in not in PSL two Z. Um, but there is a family of of gamma naught of n. N equal one through four elliptic curves that does give rise to it through this construction. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And so that's 
that's the subtle thing is, you know, we're, we're used to thinking of that wonderful Clausen identity style representation theoretic trick, you know, and, and, and there, I, by the way, I should mention, there's a bunch of generalized Clausen identity stuff that we proved in that paper with Momendier um, that then we also described the geometric origin for. And, and so there's a lot of beautiful, beautiful theory. I should really be talking to, to um, uh, some of the other speakers in the series and, and, and maybe, you know, that can happen. Um, but um, there's, a, there's a lot of, of, of beautiful um, geometry that is, is uh, behind these identities. And um, I should also add that there's absolutely no reason why we can't do this uh, in, an, in an arithmetically interesting sense. I mean, the defining equations for the families at every step are just over the integers, right? So, so we, can, we can play games where we turn this into point counts instead of, uh, um, of the usual series. We can, you know, all the games that, that, that I play with Ursula and, and um, uh, John Voigt and, and Tyler and, and uh, uh, Adriana, I mean, all, all that stuff can be done. We just stopped at K3 surfaces because we were tired. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, need, but, I need a new but, postdoc. Stop. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, my new postdoc's a, a, a string theorist though, so it might not be his cup of tea, but but um, uh, but yeah, no, I'm more than happy to, to, to sort of go back to that and say, okay, hey, you know, now what is happening arithmetically through the twist construction we're talking about with these generalized functional invariants. And, and I think it'll be a very interesting story. I mean, Andreas has done some follow-up, I think with one of his colleagues and maybe a student on, on um, some of that and still in low dimension. Um, but I think pushing this up the tower hasn't been done uh, yet in an yeah, arithmetic so, so for instance, uh, I want to have uh, this tower in the modularity setting, so this, you know? Right, so this is, this is what I'm... Yeah, so what I'm what I'm hoping, Noriko, is that is that this provides a geometric underpinning for the origin of modularity for Calabria threefold families. Yeah. Just because it's so uniform, it doesn't stop in any dimension. There's nothing specific, and I, and I feel like somehow a lot of us have been um, distracted by representation theory. You know, right, right. it's like yeah, when we see the beautiful the representation dimension, theory, working, that, yeah, that's right. It, it, but, but, but that doesn't generalize, right? The representation theory doesn't generalize, and 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 yeah. you can think of it also as as the Hodge theory. Um, you know, we lose surjectivity of the period morphism, the period mapping as we go to Calabria yeah. threefolds and beyond. And there's a lot of things that we take for granted in low dimension that start to fail. Well, this what I'm talking about doesn't fail, um, yeah. and the way yeah. we've rigged it, we will always get one natural complex structure modules. We don't have to. We can modify our construction and have the number of complex structure moduli increase and get bigger and bigger as we go up the tower. We can do that. But we've constrained it specifically so that it won't do that. So that right. you're guaranteed to get these special one parameter families at every step. And, and so uh, as, as a starting point for arithmetic investigations, I think this is a, this is a, good, a good one to look at. And, yeah, and again, yeah. even, even, even this tower, even, even the the standard, you know, um, mirror tower for, for degree n plus one hypersurfaces in PN, right? Yeah. That, that's already, that's already interesting from this standpoint. Right, right. Yes, yes. So uh, then uh, beyond the hypergeometric families, uh, you have nothing or? No, no, no. We have, we have a lot. So in that same paper uh, with, with the MNDA, um, we did the Hoyne case. <laughs> um, so we have four regular singular point examples um, and mm -hmm. continue them up, up the tower as well. Um, okay. and, and so we're not in any sense limited to hypergeometric. Um, as I said, we're not also even limited to ODEs. We, we, oh, we, don't, no. have to, we, we don't have to limit our attention to that. All, what, what it is, is, is in, in its simplest form, um, you can think of it as taking a, a, a rational total space, family of Calabiaos, and then, you know, taking some kind of base change uh, of degree two. But if you do a base change of degree two and you pin down one of the points on the P1, well, the other point can move, there's your modulus. Mm. But you could, why pin down both points? Or one point, I mean, you know, you could leave that free. Well, now you're gonna introduce a new modulus. So you don't just go to one, you go to two moduli at the next step. But now you iterate, you get more and more and more. I mean, you, you get branching and branching and branching, you get, yeah, increase yeah. in the remote line, yeah. And so this this is similar to what I did in the in the work with Andrew and and uh, Andre and Alan, uh, where we just said, okay, well, we want all MM polarized K3 fiber Calabria threefolds. We don't care that the Calabria threefolds have H21 equal one. 
We, we want all of them. And so we did it and we did the analysis and we figured out the branching, relevant branching behavior for the, the generalized functional invariant maps. Um, and I forget what the maximum number was. I don't know if it was eight or 10 or something. We, we had some large number of complex structure moduli for the most complicated uh, example that you can construct that way. Um, but what was nice about that work, and I'll come back to it a little bit. I know Andrew motivated it heavily in his, with an emphasis on M2 in his talk, but I'll come back to it with some mirror symmetry uh, uh, on Thursday. But what was really nice about that work is that it was a completely Hodge theoretic motivated construction, right? It was the first, I will say, honest classification of, of a, fam a family of Calabia threefolds um, uh, motivated by Hodge theory. I'm saying wow. honest because I'm not counting the Voisin Borsche construction because you don't actually start with, you know, the, the weight three, one, 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 one kind of, kind of structure. Uh -huh. It's not, okay. it's not, you're, you're starting with a mode with, with you're, you're starting with, with, with something of weight one, the elliptic curve and something of weight two, which is the K3 and messing around with quotients, right? Um, whereas this is genuinely weight three and, and, and yet you got it through this iterative construction. So, uh -huh. um, yeah, so it's, a, so I think, I, I think uh, it's um, uh, it, it's a it's a very powerful technique, and as we'll see in its connections to mirror symmetry on Thursday, um, it's actually a, a, a very deep probe of of mirror symmetry as well. So okay, we'll, we'll do mirror, we'll, we'll do mirroring towers on Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? No. Ping has a question, perhaps. Hi, I have a quick question. Hi. The quick question Hi. is for the Quinty family, you have a second one, right? That, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That one's fun. Yeah. So that can we, so that can we see that quickly? Can uh, we see that? Well, there's, quickly? there's not much to see. Um, I, I, you want me to go to that page? Um, oh, no, no, so no. It's, no. It's, What's the difference between that one and ah, the yeah, mirror? So, the, so, the, so, so this is also described in my original paper with Morgan. So it's, we, we call it the Quintic twin and the Quintic mm -hmm. twin mirror. Um, and the quintic twin um, is, well, there's a 21 dimensional subfamily of quintics with the property that they have a free Zeno 5C action. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you quotient by that free Zeno 5C action, you get instead of a 101 dimensional family of, of, of quintics, which are simply connected, you get a 21 dimensional family of quintic twins, which have Zeno 5C fundamental group. I see, thank you. And then that T here, oops, I didn't want to draw on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The T here is telling you the order of the fundamental group on one side, and it's this integer invariant we have on the other. Um, so we say very specifically, you know, how to modify, if you like, the ZVHS for the quintic mirror to get the ZVHS for the quintic twin mirror. Um, and it's, an, it's just another integral variation of Hodge structure. You've got some root fives in there, right? Because square roots of these inter integer uh, invariants are, are popping up in, in our uh, construction that way. Um, and, um, and, and, it, and it is geometrical, it, it does exist. Um, it's, it's in fact, and this is striking, um, the quintic twin mirror is an anti-canonical hypersurface in a gorenstein toric uh fourfold. So it's, 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 it's in the list, it's in the original list. If you go through the original list of 400 million <laughs> and you ask for which ones are going to give um, H21 equal one, you get mirrors for the quintic, the sextic, the deck, or I'll find them here. You get mirrors for the quintic, the sextic, the octic, the dectic, and the quintic one. That's it. It's the only remaining simplex that's not a weighted projective simplex. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's it's there. It exists. You know, it's just like it was there. No question about it. Um, and um, what was interesting about it, I noticed very early on. This was back probably in grad school. That um, when you use the method of of um, you know, like the method from Cox and Katz, you, you turn the crank. Uh, the method that Yao developed with, with Hosono and, and all those guys. Um, and you, you compute using GKZ style methods what the actual Picard Fuchs differential equation has to be. The answer turns out to be exactly the same as the Quinnick mirror, like the, exactly the same. And so, one nice thing about the analysis with Morgan is that we completely answered why that's the case. The reason why that's the case 
is that it's the same, it's a different integral variation of Hodge structure with the same under, underlying real VHS. And then its sort of mirror origin came from the fact that it's not simply connected. It's the mirror of a not simply connected Columbia. So I have some follow-up work with, um, uh, you know, Tom Coates and Elena Kalashnikov, uh, like modernizing this perspective a little bit that got a little sidetracked because Alana had a baby and, you know, it's all happy and good. We'll, we'll get back to it. Um, it, it, it's, it it's, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. Uh, but, um, uh, but when that comes out, that'll give like a definitive kind of modern Iritani style approach, you know, take on, on a lot of these observations we've been talking about too. Um, and, um, and you, you can get a lot of mileage from the new technology. In fact, honestly, in this paper with Morgan, the reason why I never pushed for a follow-up eventually was that um, Hiroshi did a, just such a beautiful job, Irutani, uh, with, with developing the theory the way he did it, um, that I didn't really see the point at the time of, of following the more traditional topological approach with Morgan. Um, and, and now it's fun to come back to it and see, you know, what lessons you can learn from the old analysis. Uh, and that's, that's, that's kind of where we're at. That's what, what we're thinking these days. Thank you. I got another student waiting for me. All right. Thank you so okay. much. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, more questions? No more if questions. Not, okay. No more questions. Okay. So then thank the speaker and look for the second talk this week. Thanks, Noriko, okay, for thank joining you. also. Thanks, Jack. Okay, no problem. Bye-bye. See you, see you Thursday. Yeah. Bye. Bye.